floor for the good report got on uh, Brother Kenneth Medlock today. Brother Kenneth went to uh, Fayetteville, and uh, the uh, doctor told him, said, man, you're just like a 39-year-old man. You're just ever getting younger. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that he was doing good, doing good. Blood pressure great and everything. So that is just awesome. Praise the Lord. I'm going to contribute that to prayer too. Okay, amen. brother? <laughs> Thank the Lord for the physician. But uh, amen. Praise the Lord that uh, you got that great report. And we're believing that good report on Sister Stella on Friday as well. Amen. Pray that she'll get rid of that harness she's been dealing with there. So uh, keep her in your prayers that things are going to go well Friday whenever they're going to do that. Also, just uh, keep uh, Brother Jess, Sister Tammy, your prayers. Sister Tammy, she went seeing three different doctors today, and she was just wiped out. Uh, so that's why they're not here this evening. And so uh, just keep her in your prayers. Everything's going to continue to be good and go well for her. So I uh, wanted to keep her in our prayers for God to bless and to minister there. And uh, also, could do a prayer for Sister Danielle. I know that she went Thursday to the doctor. She was here Sunday, I know, but... Uh, Likewise, keeping her in your prayers. For she's still looking at a few things she's dealing with, uh, but we know God is the answer. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, believe in God. Praise the Lord. Amen. And let's continue to pray for the other knees that we've been praying for, Brother uh, and Sister Hitchcock, Brother Sister Norvella, and Brother Earl. And uh, he was he was keeping her, taking care of her. Sundays why he wasn't here, but uh, they're doing some better. So thank the Lord for that keeping them in our prayers for God to minister unto them. Likewise, let's continue to pray that God's going to minister unto those we know we've been praying for, pray for, for Pam, and uh, also continue to pray for Artie and for Bonnie, for these that are battling with cancer. We know the Lord is the one that intercedes for Debbie Rush, praying that God's going to touch and give us a miracle. And Debbie, the name, the name cancer is a name, but we know a name is above every name, do we not? Right. Amen. So we're going to pray and believe the Lord. He's going to touch and give us some victories and healings uh, and the miracles uh, that is needed. Uh, Sharon uh, Allman's uh, son, David, keeping him in our prayers as well. And uh, also, uh, Brother Dave, Brother, uh, uh, well, Brother David Mayer, and he's going to be having some uh, eye issues about on the 17th to find what's going on with him. But uh, let's uh, remember uh, the Rogers family uh, this coming uh Friday, they're going, going to be having a service for his sister-in-law that passed away. If you remember, we had asked prayer for her, and that she was in the hospital. I went there and in Tulsa, but uh, she is from Kansas where she lives. Um, she did pass away Sunday, so we'll be having her service on Friday. So let's just pray for the Rogers family, that God would just touch it and minister and comfort and intercede there for them. So I wanted to make mention to that to on her behalf, her family on uh, her behalf. So let's pray for God's intercessions there for them and for Brother Eddie. We know God is the answer. Continue you know, praying for him and Sister Linda, I know that they are recovering as well. Boy, it's just like there's been a lot of uh, kind of like, what is it like, kind of virus stuff and uh, flu-like stuff and uh, just different things that uh, is really just kind of floating around, so to speak. And people are certainly having their issues and certainly in uh, that's not Zach's situation. Zach is really having some issues and running some high fever, and then it's coming down and coming back up, and uh, he is really having some uh, issues as well. But we know God is the answer this yeah. evening, and so we're going to pray for the Lord's intercessions to bring healing unto each one of these that we mentioned to you this evening in prayer. You may have requests you'd like to share for others that maybe I have not mentioned to you, but uh, if you would like to, then... Uh, Go ahead, keep my sister uh, Wakana in our prayers. Just so continue to battle with that gout, gout with her. So keeping them in your prayer. You have requests you like to share that maybe I have not mentioned. You want to mention anyone? Francil? Yes. So they're looking at blood transfusion with her? Wow. Gosh, and this three-year-old, was it three-year-old? Wow. So uh, do remember, God will touch this. Touch her, amen, for sure. 
others, okay? Brother Kenders? Yes. I will have it, give my good reports. Amen. <coughs> Thank you. I, I was went, looking up there, and I didn't turn around and look at you. Go ahead, Sister Ann. I, I went to the retina specialist Monday, and he told me what's wrong with my eyes, and I can't tell you the name of it, but he said it's something normal that my eye should absorb it and take care of it. And But I don't have... I'm not having cataract surgery yet. I see him again in a month. But he said it's not it's not anything, I guess, serious. It's not serious. But my eyes are supposed to take care of it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So praise hey, the Lord. You bet. <laughs> you bet. It's just God has answered prayer. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Sometimes we may have some of those continuing things that we deal with, but uh, God touched the main part there. That's the main thing. Good. Amen. Any others? All right. Praise the Lord. Oh, okay. Remember that in our prayers for sure, along with uh, the uh, Ukrainian situation. Pray for God's intercessions there as well. We know the Lord's answer for our nation, God's uh, intercessions on our nation. Thank the Lord because he is the one that we can call upon no matter what. Amen. Thank God. Our missionaries at home and abroad, keeping them in our prayers as usual. We know the Lord certainly is the one that will sustain and bless them as well. Amen. Have I already had you raise your hand? Do it again if I had. <laughs> special unspoken request and lost loved one. Let's believe God this evening in a special way, shall we? Lead us in the chorus. Would you, Sister Evans? Amen. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own oh, way. Oh, grant it, Father God. Yes. Thou the potter, I am the clay. Oh, yes. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yield it and still. One more time. just stand. Come on, church. Let's call on the Lord on the behalf of each of these. Lord, we know that you're the almighty God. There's not anything too hard for you. We know that you are the one, Lord, that you say we have none if we don't ask. So we're asking this evening, Lord, for each need, each need, Lord, that has been brought before you. We know that some are perhaps maybe more critical than others, but Lord, you're mindful of each one, no matter how great or how minute that it may be. So we pray this evening, Lord, in the name, above every name, in your name. Lord, give us miracles. God, touch you to minister with healings. And let the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, do your perfected work in hearts and in lives. You're the creator. We're the creatures, Lord. And Father, we pray that you touch these bodies, Lord. Give us, Father, your favor. Favor for healing, Lord. Lord, let them be the minister of your spirit. Cancer's a name. Put your name above the name cancer, Lord. And Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you this evening, Lord, for hearing and answering and ministering prayer. Thank you for the good reports that we've given of this evening, Lord, from Sister Evans and Brother Kenneth, Lord. And Lord, we know that you are the one that brings forth the complete healings. Uh, and Lord, for the praise and the glory that is due unto you. Reach out this evening, Lord, unto every individual, Lord, that is on our prayer list, Lord, that is given to us each Sunday morning, Lord. Each one we've named and mentioned them, but each one on our prayer list, Lord, we pray your hand would just be extended and place your hand upon them, Lord. Touch them at the very point of their need this evening, Lord. Let them know and feel that through the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, your grace, your grace is sufficient. May the sufficiency of your grace, Lord, bring forth healing and deliverances because you are the power and the glory, Lord. Lord, we pray for this three-year-old girl, God, 
Lord, we know you're the intercessor, Lord. Lord, we know it looks impossible on the exterior, but Lord, we know that you're the answer. Touch this grandbaby, God. Give her your healing virtues. Let her feel, Lord, that divine intervention within her young life, Father. Lord, we pray for Zach tonight, Lord. Give healing to his body, God. Let the healing virtue remove whatever that is, Lord, he is dealing with, Lord. To remove all the fever, the symptoms, Lord, the redness in his body, God, in Jesus, in your name, in your name, Jesus, that the power of your Holy Ghost Spirit, Lord, do your perfected work, Lord, as we yield to you as the yielded vessels, Lord. And thank you even in advance, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're going to do, Lord. Touching our nation, Lord, our nation needs you, Lord. Oh, give us your mercies, Lord. We pray, God, for our intercessions there in Ukraine, Lord, for the Ukrainian people, Lord, for the battling through the war problems and difficulties, the killings and the onslaught that they're going through. Lord, have mercies, mercies upon them, Lord. Lord, we pray for your intercession, our missionaries at home and abroad. Let them feel your grace, your love, your compassion to move upon them tonight as only, only you can. You are God. You are God. In your name, Lord Jesus, grant it. Give us moms and dads, sons and daughters, Lord. Let the power of your Holy Ghost Spirit do your perfected work, Lord, because we know you are the mighty, almighty God, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Leave for good report for our own, our own brother Jerry throughout. God, Lord, give us a good, good report. Each one, Lord, each one, Lord, in the name above every name. In your name, Lord, we pray to God. Oh, yeah. Slip a hand toward heaven and thank him in advance. Lord, we thank you as we give you praise and glory and honor unto the only just and righteous holy God. Lord, we thank you because you, you are the almighty God. Touch, thank you for the touch that you've ministered into lives and in souls for the miracles. Lord, we're just looking to hear, oh Lord, because we know that you are the answer. Thank you for souls, moms and dads, sons and daughters. And we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus, your Jesus. Your mighty and holy name. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And all of God's children said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You may be seated. God bless you. Thank you for standing and referencing and praying and believing and trusting in the Lord. Thank you so much in your ministry of giving as well, deceiving. And thank the Lord because we know that he is God and he's got it all in control. Thank you, musicians. Done a great job. Amen. Thank you, Sister Nina. Good. Hey, yeah, there you go. <laughs> amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Awesome, awesome, John. Thank you. Amen, Brother John. Hallelujah. God's good to us. Amen. We got we got two Johns as bass players. We got a Keith, and uh, so thank the Lord for him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, this evening we've had we've had a lot of stuff going on, and uh, so I talked to uh, Brother John Goodman. Asked him if he'd be willing to speak tonight he hadn't spoken about three or four Wednesdays or three or four weeks or whatever so uh don't matter if he spoke just last Wednesday we want to hear him again amen so we're going to ask brother John brother John Goodman come my brother take your liberty in the Lord and God bless you in doing so amen Hello. I remember about 10 years ago, I didn't need these things. They say, they say the golden years, I'm not so sure they're that golden. So 
I don't like carrying. I have a pair everywhere I go, in the house, the truck, the van. I mean, it's every, they're all over the place. But thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to come up here and, and, and break forth some bread for y'all. Uh, it's a little bit different out of order of sorts, so um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I don't have uh, – my main, main text is at the very end. So you got to stay here and wait and pay attention, and then we'll, then we'll show you the main text. So that's my way to keep you all here as, as you can't run off. But let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you today and forever for allowing us to be able to assemble in this place because we know there are places in the world today that this is not allowed. We are humbled by this awesome, awesome privilege we have. And God, let us never forget where our glory, where, where our, our, our blessings come from, our rights they come from our ability to gather together in your name where it comes from, and that is the blood of Christ. And Lord, tonight we ask that something said today from this humble servant will touch someone's life and carry them at least for another few days so we can hear your word again to us. And God, we just ask that you prepare the hearts to receive this, and hopefully it does some good. But I give it to you, Lord Jesus, and ask that you bless it. In your holy name we pray, amen. All right. Y'all ready? There are approximately 171,000 words in the English language. It does not count for the approximately 48,000 that have been deemed obsolete. Now, I tell you what, that's a job. To sit around somewhere and go, I don't like that word. We're not going to use it no more. That's got to be a pretty cool job. And from birth or when we were able to speak, we, we know how words are used. And we, we, we start to form them together to make phrases. And then we put the phrases together and we make sentences. And before you know it, we're having a conversation. All right? A conversation is how relationships are formed. Right? You don't have a relationship with your spouse or anyone without first speaking to them and conversing with them. So that, that's something to keep in mind. And this is how we've done this for a long time. Well, my goodness, probably for the beginning of time. We talk, we communicate through this. There's a grouping of, se- there's a several grouping of words that when placed in the proper order and behind a certain context become extremely powerful. All right, words that when used or can be used as a weapon, and this has very tremendous destructive power. Or they can be used in a restor- restorative purpose. They can tear people down, Brother John. They can build them back up. They can bring life or they can speak death. Words are a very delicate tool that we all should be aware of because we all have them. We all have the ability to speak. Therefore, we can bring life or we can bring death. Tonight, I'm going to focus on four particular phrases. And number one is one of my favorites. Well, yeah, just click the button. Hopefully this works. Maybe. Yeah. Got to have the picture for that. I'm telling you. So for those of y'all who don't don't know, I'm an IT manager. That is my job by trade. And I can't stand them sometimes. My wife, everything's every time someone breaks, hey, come fix this. And that job, hey, come fix this, or tell me how to fix this, or what do we need to do here? And someone don't don't anyone ask me a question about Facebook. I don't know how it works. I don't even like it really half the time. Anything? Nope. Okay, that's fine. Anybody got a testimony? We've heard a lot of good praise reports. How about a testimony tonight? No? Hey, here we go. Yeah.
I tell you what, I've said it before, and I'll say it, this church is a praying church, and God hears this church when they pray. All right, I think we're ready. Yeah, number one. Just Yeah, I just clicked the, the, okay, here we go. Yeah, who all knows this movie? Who all knows the movie? Come on. All right. <clears throat> this is the origin of this phrase, according to me. I'm your huckleberry. All right. This was a popular phrase used in the movie Tombstone back when Doc Holliday informs Johnny Ringo that there was a game of blood that didn't get played that day. This, to me, is one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. I can tell you where I was, where I seen it, who I seen it with, how old I was, where we live in the house. Because this movie became a staple in the Goodman home growing up. My family and I, we milked every one-liner from this movie. I'm your Huckleberry. That was the best one, you know. Um, Why, Johnny Ringo, I believe someone stepped over your grave. I mean, we could go all day, right? We took to this movie. But commonly, this phrase is used when there's a challenge ahead or someone challenges you or, or anybody. They say, hey, we need to go do X, Y, and Z. And some bold person will say, I'm your huckleberry. And that means you know it's about to get real, right? Something's going to go down. I can picture this example in the Bible, something like this. Back in the book of Job, the devil was walking around, and he's looking for messes to get and get started. And God's up there going, I'm your huckleberry. Have you met my man named Job? And we know how the story goes, right? At the end of this ordeal, the devil got no deal. There was no deal for him to have. No deal devil. Number two, another good one. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows this one, right? Older than the first one. Made famous by this gentleman right here. Also made famous, my wife hates this, with every scary movie, the person who's about to get it says, I'll be back. We all know they ain't coming back. That's it for them, right? But this phrase is used a lot. It is a promise from the speaking person to the receiving person of a future state. I'll be back. As Christians, this is our hope. This is our promise. This is our safety. It is our refuge. And John 14, 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself, that where I am there you may also be. So Jesus says, I'll be back. All right? We hold that promise true, that he will come home to take us away from this mess that we live in. However, he's not the same guy. In this movie, this man come back, and it did look like he aged a single day. But 2,000 plus years ago, there was a man named Jesus born. 33 years later, he said, I'll be back. Folks, he's not coming back looking the same. He is coming back robed and clothed in glory. He is coming back as a king of kings. He is coming back as the Lord of lords. He will not be in a manger. He will not depend on anything or anybody to feed him, to clothe him, to take care of him. He is coming back to reign supreme. He will return, and this place is not our home. He's coming to take us away with him. Number three, I love you. Used to show affl affection, I almost said affliction. Could be affliction sometimes. Used to show affection. From one person to another, this one we're most familiar with, right? We've all said it. We've all been on the receiving end of it. In Genesis chapter 1, he's, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon them. 27 says, so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. This is how John interprets this. We have two arms and two legs, a head, a torso. That's the physical appearance. That's the physical image, right? But an image is more than just what you see. It's also the insides, too, right? 
how do I know this? Well, because the Bible says that Jesus was 100 percent man and 100 percent God. And if we're created in his image, the feelings that we have. He has also. So, see, he hurts like we hurt. He feels as we feel. He loves as we should love. Right? Love is a central piece to this plan that God has for salvation and for us. In 1 John 4, 8, it says, He that loveth not knows not God. That is a very, very bold statement and a cautionary tale for us. How many times in anger have you heard someone say, or heaven forbid we say, I hate that. I hate that person. I don't like them. That is not lining up with what he says here. God is love. John 15, 12, and 13, one of my favorites, says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man, that he would lay down his life for his friend. Now, how I see this is also a foreshadowing, because this was Jesus speaking of the love that Jesus exemplifies on the cross of Calvary. When he stretched forth his hands on that cross and died, his love at that point in time and today and forever knows no bounds. It stops for no time. It stops for no person. It stops for no circumstances. It doesn't even stop for us. When we walk away from God, his love does not cease to continue to chase after us. Sin cannot separate us from the love of God. We can. We can. And we have to hold to that. Now, his love is perfect, but we are to pattern our love after that love. And finally, not yet, (laughs) the most important phrase ever uttered from the mouth of a living person. Number four. It is finished. It is done. The origin is John 1930. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said it is finished. And then he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Greek word for finished is to leo. It is to bring to an end, to complete, to perfect. Strong's exhaustive concordance mentions also it is to discharge a debt. I did not know that. How amazing is it that when we accept Jesus and he said it's done, we are debt free in the eyes of sin. We don't owe anything. Our debtors are kept at bay. There is no repossession. There's no loan sharks anymore, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. That is over because it is finished. Let's break this down a little bit. What is these three words that make this? Amazing phrase, it. My car broke down, it doesn't work anymore. My family tree is shattered, it, the family unit, will not survive. My body's falling apart, it, the body, is full of aches and pains and diseases. You see, the it takes the place of a pronoun, as a pronoun, it takes the place of a noun, a person, place, thing, or idea. You didn't know you were doing English tonight, did you? There'll be a test before you leave, it's okay. It takes a place of that. My future is uncertain. It, the future, is not secured in Christ if it's uncertain. Salvation is within our grasp. It, salvation, was bought. So see, the way this is phrased, it can be anything. Keep that in mind. Is is a verb in the English language. It is the present tense and also, oh, and when used as an auxiliary verb, did not know this either, I should have studied probably harder in English in high school, but I I didn't. I I do it now. He notes a continuous action. Finished is an adjective to describe the pronoun it, in this case, used to describe the noun. Sickness is finished. Sin is finished. Pain and suffering is finished. With the birth of Jesus, a countdown was started. He had three and a half years of his life on this earth. But the countdown was started, 
and every single step up to the road of Calvary, it continued. Every crack of the cat of nine tails, it continued. Every beard hair that was plucked from my Savior's face, the countdown continued to tick down and tick down. Every slap on his precious face, the countdown continued. Every lot cast for his clothes, the countdown continued. And with every long look or scream to cry, crucify him, the countdown continued. It wasn't a countdown to the end the way we think of it as the end. But it was a countdown of the end of his suffering, which had to have been excruciating. But in the darkest, darkest moment of humankind history came the greatest final words that has ever been uttered from a human being. It is finished. It is done. No longer do we have to fight. No longer do we have to suffer. No longer do we have to wonder what tomorrow holds. It is done. It is finished. Our pain is finished. Our suffering is finished. Our enduring this... this heck of a place to be is finished because our hope doesn't lie in anything we can see or touch on this place. Our hope lies in the blood-stained hands of our Savior because He finished. He left nothing, nothing to chance. It is done. As the blood ran down that cross and through every single age from then till now, it began to pull together families that had been torn apart. It began to mend broken hearts caused by those in our lives, sometimes even the closest ones in our lives. It began to rebuild trust and friendships and relationships that covered our transgressions and it finally covered our bodies because in the, the dawn of man when Adam was created, we kind of messed that up, right? We kind of, this is a woman's fault, but we won't know. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Just playing. We messed that up, right? And from that point on, we were destined for damnation. But praise God, out of heaven stepped a lamb. Out of heaven, out of heaven stepped a sacrifice, who was allowed himself to be nailed to a tree. You see, he could have called angels down. He was the son of God. He is the son of God. He did not need help getting up there. He sure did need it getting down. He is Jesus. But he chose to sit there and take that for us, our pain, our suffering, our our everything. And then he said, "You know what? It's done. No more do you have to feel the things you feel. No more do you have to be afraid of the things that you're afraid of because it's over. It's been made Perfect. The blood that was shed on Calvary serves as a banner of remembrance. It's unwavering. It is a monument that can never be destroyed by right or left, by any mob, by anything. It is a reminder that tells us every single it in our life. Every single it that comes against us, Brother John, every single thing that comes after us is done. It is finished. It is over. I don't know. I don't know how this came to me. But it did. And tonight, someone needs to hear. It is finished. It is finished. You don't have to carry whatever it is anymore. It's done. It's over. It's under the blood. It's on the altar. It's out of your hands. You don't have to fight that anymore because that battle was waged while you weren't even around. And some 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ himself secured that victory for you and me and the church of God. We no longer have to worry or wonder or stress or go beg and plead because that Savior finished it. It's over. It's done. Not to come against us no more. No weapon will prosper. Why? Because he left no remnants of it. It's over. It's done. It was crucified on the cross with him, and it ain't coming back. Tonight. Whatever your it may be, whether it be public, private, spiritual, emotional, mental, it doesn't matter what your it is. Because Jesus knows you better 
than you know you. He knows you better than you think you know you. And he's already covered it. All you have to do is turn it over and stop trying to finish it yourself because you won't be able to. But our Savior, our Savior, our Lord, our Jesus Christ, our Son of God has finished it for us. That's the love. One day, he's coming back. And he told the devil, I'm your huckleberry. That church in Mulberry, they're mine. And it's done. It's finished. I've already fought their battle. I've already won their war. It's over. So tonight, if there are any things that you are facing, if there is anything that you're uncertain about, if there is anything that's not finished, keep in mind, we keep that open. <laughs> Come on. We keep it open. We worry about it because we don't know how to handle it. Guys, it's right here. This is how you handle it. And you leave it here when you get up because it's not yours anymore. You've given it to the one true living Savior who has finished it before you ever began. And that's the way God works. He leaves nothing to chance. He leaves nothing in hopes of. He is God Almighty. And he wrote the book. And at the end, he says, it is finished. So if you can, if you're able, if you have a need tonight, these altars are the best place to lay these things down right here. This family you have in this building is the best people to pray for you as you lay them down right here. It's finished. If you will, if musicians want to come back or if she wants to play, I, it doesn't matter to me. But it's done. It's finished. We don't have to carry it no more. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes that gets pretty heavy. We don't have to carry it, Brother Rick. It wasn't ours to carry in the beginning. But it is completed. It is made perfect. And it wasn't a question mark at the end of that statement. It was an exclamation point. It is done. It's finished. Never to come back again. These altars are open. If you will please and you are able, if there's anything bothering you, if there's any it in your life tonight, leave it here before you go home. Don't take that junk with you. All that's going to do is fester and rim, and it's just going to shatter and splinter. It's going to grow back, and before you know it, we're back here again. Not that being back here again doing this isn't a, is a bad thing. We should do that. Forsake not the gathering together. But it is done. It is done, done, done. If you would please stand. If you're able, if you're able to come down to the altars, come on down to the altar. Because these altars is for a time and a place such as this. Just like that cross was a time and a place such as then to lay the road map for everything that we don't have to carry anymore. So find a spot, please, tonight and pray. Give it up because it's not ours to carry. And it's already done. suffering and shame and 
Okay. 